Uh, today we have a very rare and unusual wrench uh, made by Gendron, the Gendron Bicycle Company, who manufactured this as a true bicycle wrench. It was made in two styles, one the standard bicycle wrench style and the other uh, one with a spoke adjuster. But uh, this is the basic style and uh, patented in June 7th, 1892, so it's almost 130 years old as far from the patent date, uh, in surprisingly good condition for that age. We'll uh, be back with a nice restoration on this item. So after getting uh, started on the wire brushing, I haven't done all of it, I just kind of went over it lightly to kind of see, bring out, you actually bring out some of the flaws and things you haven't seen before that are going to need special attention. And uh, beyond the wire brushing, and interesting, a very interesting part is this handle. Had a nice little knurling on it here. But when you got down to the business end of it here where it was held on with a hand or whatever, you can see really pitting, just a light pitting all the way around. Whereas it's smoother it's smoother up here towards towards the knurling down here. That's going to re require some sanding to get that brought down. So we'll have to give that a little extra attention to bring it out and the whole section here really needs it except I want to keep the knurling on here which is nice so that's what a little wire brushing will do it'll bring out uh, exposed things that need to be handled a little bit differently okay continuing on with the restoration of the bicycle wrench and showed you where I needed to take this part and really smooth it out where there was a lot of pitting on here, fine pitting. And of course this great carpal tunnel tendonitis thing, whatever I've got going on, I think a lot, some of it's due to repetitive motion and I've been doing a lot of hand sanding and a lot of hand filing and I believe that's something I got to back off on for a while. So I needed, I didn't have a lathe to put this on to turn it down. So I put this contraption together. Basically, I had an old drill. It's about 35 years old. And it was a, a hammer drill, two-speed hammer drill. But I took it and uh, installed it on a little frame here, on, on a little frame here using a bolt through the handle bracket down through these boards where I could mount it on here. Something I may later on extend out and put turn into a, a mini lay, but in the meantime I needed something to turn this piece to give me an assist on it. And I basically took the handle itself, uh, put this bolt through it with a nut, set it up on here to create a little mandrel to hold this piece so I could turn it. And basically, I'll be able to. This is a, a variable speed, zero to 1,000, zero to 3,000 RPM drill. So I'm able to get, uh, I can lock it into a speed and use it by uh, turning it on like this. I'm trying to remember where the trigger lock was. And then using my sandpaper. Uh, some other uses for my contraption here. I've got these small wire brushes in different configurations that I've had for a while that I'm really not using. And occasionally I need to get into tight areas. And the Dremel does... Okay, but those brushes just don't hold up. 
Man, I bought some cheap ones on the internet, and they, they last about 10 or 15 seconds. Never do that again. So I bought the Dremel brand, and it, and it does hold up a little better, but I really, for the cost of them, I, the, the, the return is not real good. So I'm going to try to get some of those smaller spaces, not the tiniest, but some areas that are a little too uh, small for the wire brush on the grinder, and try that my contraption here to see how it works. And it's time for the reveal on this nice little wrench. Came out great. Came out great. Uh, you can see the work on that handle paid off. That heavy, heavy pitting and discoloration on the bottom is all gone. The knurling's still on here. Uh, see the logo quite clear now. And uh, the roughness and hammering and flared edges from uh, uh, use is gone now. So everything's smooth. And uh, did turn out nice. Give you a little bit of information on it. Uh, the Diamond and Bicycle Wrench was manufactured by Gendron Iron Wheel Company. Peter Gendron acquired over 75 patents for carriage, wagon, and bicycle wheels. He began his career as a pattern maker, and uh, he developed a wire wheel for children, children's carriages. And uh, the company was formed and incorporated in 1880. They made wheels for agricultural machinery before focusing on children's vehicles. Competition from cheap wooden wheels was fierce. The company survived and grew at a steady pace. They became the largest manufacturer of children, children's vehicles in the world. A new factory was built in, 19, in 1889 to produce safety bicycles. The name was changed to Gendron Wheel Company in 1895. Peter died in 1910, but the company continued into the Depression. Uh, I, this is the uh, original patent from 1892. Uh, picture of it, it doesn't all the detail pages, you know, aren't enclosed, but it just shows when it was patented, 1892. Inter interestingly enough, I found an ad uh, with someone selling one of these wrenches, claiming it's one of the a very, very rare wrench, and in many years of collections, it was the first one he'd ever come across. And you can see what he was asking for it, 115 bucks. Uh, I, I think I paid around $14 for this wrench, so I didn't know what I was getting, but evidently I got, uh, got a really nice wrench for the money. And uh, even he talked about the logo on the wrench and described it exactly, but you can't even see the logo on this one. If it's there, it's really faint. Got some initials carved in it. So it's not nearly as right nice a wrench as what we've got here, but uh, pleased to have it. Oh, it works smoothly. Just a, a, a design that's been used on some other wrenches later on. I, I don't know if they copied this one or what happened, but uh, Super nice little wrench. Thanks for watching.